Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's a senior lawyer as well with the Supreme Court. Uh, Mr. Bhushan was among uh, one of the petitioners who sought an independent probe in the justice lawyer case as well. Uh, and uh, from what I understand, you called the verdict extremely disappointing and a black day. I want to understand from you, Mr. Bhushan, your reaction to this impeachment motion that has been moved this morning. Well, uh, I think uh, uh, there was no option uh, uh, for for the uh, polity of this country, except to move this impeachment motion, because every other every other method had been tried, including we uh, we had submitted a, a complaint under the in-house procedure, which could not obviously have been submitted against the chief justice to the chief justice himself. So it was submitted to the next five judges. That also did not elicit any reaction because the in-house procedure does not explicitly mention what happens when the complaint is against the Chief Justice himself. Mm. Uh, now this impeachment motion... We seem to have lost that audio of Prashant Bhushan. We're going to try and get it back again. But uh, what Mr. Bhushan was telling us, and this was really important, uh, was that he personally believes that there perhaps have, this was a last resort and there was no other choice. I want to remind our viewers that Prashant Pushan was among the petitioners who had sought an independent probe in the Justice Lawyer case, the case that the Supreme Court dismissed uh, all petitions seeking an SIT probe into the case of the special CBI judge, uh, Justice B.H. Lawyer. Uh, Mr. Bhushan had called this a black day in the Supreme Court history. and. Uh, you know, it, it's, and he also said it was extremely disappointing, the, uh, the verdict that had come out, the judgment that had come out in that case, not, not to investigate uh, the case. I understand we have uh, the audio back again. Mr. Bhushan, I apologize uh, for that bad connection. Please continue. So you were telling us uh, how you believe that this was uh, perhaps the last resort. Yes, you see, there are five serious charges against the Chief Justice. First, that uh, he apparently uh, entered into some agreement to obtain bribes in the medical college case, uh, of which the CBI has collected adequate evidence, but is for some reason is just sitting on that evidence. Uh, second, that uh, he backdated a memo which was uh, sent hurriedly to court number two in order to prevent court number two from fixing a bench in this medical college case uh, which sought an independent investigation. Third, that he abused his uh, judicial and administrative power in order to hear and decide cases involving himself, which means this medical college case. Uh, fourth, that uh, he gave a false affidavit to obtain land for himself uh, from the Odisha government when he was a lawyer. And lastly, that he abused his power as master of the roster in fixing politically sensitive cases before inappropriate benches, which is a charge which was also made by four senior judges in their press conference. Mr. Bhushan, so therefore, you... yes. in the light of such serious charges, Yes. Do you believe any of this was uh, in reaction to the... In the light of the... such serious yes. charges... Please go ahead. I apologize. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So do you believe... go, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you believe any of this was in reaction to the justice lawyer matter that was, uh, that was dismissed yesterday? No, no. I don't think it had anything to do with the judge lawyer matter because the judge lawyer matter decision came suddenly yesterday. And the impeachment process and the signatures, etc., had been going on at least for the last three weeks. Uh, and they had sought time, uh, the political parties had sought time from the vice president a week ago. But he was uh, uh, outside uh, the town and therefore appointment was given today. Otherwise, the signatures had been obtained on that impeachment motion much earlier. Mr. Bhushan, I, I want to draw your attention to the fact, and you, and you said yourself, that this has never happened before. In fact, the rules don't even clearly mention how this should proceed when the person in question is the Honorable Chief Justice of India. What do you think is going to happen next? Uh, we know what the procedure is, but how long do you think it will take, given the fact that this is such a grave and serious matter? 
You see, uh, the vice president now needs to appoint an inquiry committee of three judges in consultation with the number two judge of the Supreme Court because obviously he can't consult the Chief Justice on an impeachment motion against himself. Mm -hmm. So therefore he needs to consult judge number two in order to appoint an inquiry committee of one sitting Supreme Court judge, one sitting Chief Justice of a high court and one eminent jurist. After that, the committee starts inquiring. I believe the CBI already has uh, all the evidence that is required for charge number one. Charge number two is a very simple charge. It doesn't require much inquiry as to whether the Chief Justice committed misconduct by dealing with a case involving himself when he was told to recuse himself from the matter. Charge number three is also a very simple matter whose inquiry can be done very quickly uh, about the backdating of the memo. Charge number four, again, all the documentary evidence, I believe, has been annexed to the impeachment motion uh, regarding charge number four, regarding his aff uh, false affidavit for obtaining the land. And charge number five is about his listing of cases. None of these should take much time. If an inquiry committee is serious about the matter, they should be able to complete that process within uh, one month at the outside. And thereafter, the report is submitted, uh, and then the matter goes for voting in both houses of parliament. Mr. Bhushan, we also had the Supreme Court observe uh, that it, it felt that the, the talk about impeachment by, by lawmakers uh, openly and in public was unfortunate and uh, they didn't believe that it should have been done in that manner. Do you agree? No, no, certainly not. You see, no impeachment can be secret, a secret process. How can you get a impeachment motion signed by 100 MPs of the Lok Sabha or 50 MPs of the Raj Sabha by keeping it secret? It is not possible. Uh, this is something which is something which is bound to uh, go out in the open, which is bound to be talked about, which is bound to be discussed. The MPs also need to discuss it amongst themselves before they sign and uh, uh, file the impeachment motion, etc. And Right. Uh, we're losing that line, but we're going to keep coming back to Mr. Bhushan and try and get that fixed as quickly as possible. Remember his reaction to the fact that there has been uh, sort of talk in the open about impeachment was uh, he said that it's impossible to get 71 MPs or 100 MPs, members of parliament, to sign such a serious impeachment motion against, uh, against the, uh, the Chief Justice of India without them having to discuss the matter. And it's possibly that discussion that has uh, surfaced in, in, in the public domain. Mr. Bhushan also making it very clear that he believed that, uh, you know, in, in this particular case, uh, the, the vice president or the chairperson of the Rajya Sabha would have, to, would have to consult with the second, the number two judge of the Supreme Court uh, because uh, normal precedent would, would be to consult with the Chief Justice himself but in this particular case that would not be possible. Arim, 